So, welcome. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> fix our hairstyle first. Uh, yeah. okay. um, so, welcome to today's research talk. This is the 11th event of the Research Methodology Group at Kyoto University. Uh, I'm your host today, Jin Jin Ling. And as I promised you before, I'm running four events on systematic literature review and how it can be integrated into your own research. So this is a half theory presentation, um, half hand-on practice for participants of this group. So that's the start. Let me share my screen. My screen here, share. Can you see the PowerPoint presentation page? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see Systematic Literature Review Workshop, SLRW, with books on the side, right? Yep. <laughs> Great, thank you for the confirmation. So um, let's go to what's going to be presented today. Okay, so let me move this window a little bit down here. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, as I said, it's a half presentation, half, you know, hang on experience. So, for today's presentation, I expect it to be lasting for, let's say, 20 to 30 minutes, but sometimes I tend to talk a lot. So, I, I'm not sure, um, but I would say 30 minutes. And then you're going to have some homework to do before the next event starts. Okay, so um, today's presentation is going to include mainly three parts. First part is to let you understand the workflow of systematic literature review is very important. So I'm currently doing a youth entrepreneurship education review project uh, with a group of uh, collaborators. And uh, I'm going to introduce the workflow of this project so that you can have a template to, uh, to start. And then I'm going to introduce uh, um, the first stage of the um, doing systematic literature re review, that is to plan the review, the whole process, the whole research. And uh, that first stage includes um, two steps. One is preliminary literature scoping, and one is systematic, uh, system, systematic literature review protocol and how to develop one. So that's a uh, go to the homework. So uh, responding to these three parts of the presentation, you are going to first also start designing your own workflow of your research review. And you can conduct some preliminary literature review based on your uh, topic. And then you can start working on producing your own uh, review protocol based on the guideline provided by this talk. So the blue characters that you see here, TA, GA. TA means the tem template available and the GA means guideline available. So I'm going to show you later in detail. So let's go to the first part that is to introduce the workflow of systematic literature review. Um, as I said before, I'm working on this project to review uh, about 30 year, year span of um, youth entrepreneurship education research um, that is dedicated to the target audience of high school adolescents. And I learned a lot from this project. And uh, the reason that I'm, I'm deciding to, um, I decided to run this workshop is to basically summarize what I have learned from that project. Um, on one side is to, you know, um, let's say, record some historical learning uh, to archive later for my own uh, study. And another aspect is to share with my peer, uh, young researchers about how um, systematic literature review uh, can be achieved. So let's go to the workflow here. Um, as you can see from the from the screen here, um, for the year project, we, we designed three stages. The first one is planning the review that is going to be uh, extensively covered today by this talk. The second stage is uh, conduct a review. 
so officially conducting the review. And then the third stage is reporting and dissemination or publishing, sharing. So um, as you can see that for different stage, there are detailed steps to follow. And uh, these four events are going to cover them, hopefully all of them. And uh, let's go to the first stage now, um, because I don't want to overwhelm you with uh, a lot of steps uh, um, right, right away. So let's go to the first stage of planning the review. Uh, that includes um, first, phase that is to identify the need for a review and second phase is to develop a review protocol. So um, I'm going to introduce you first to this. Let's, let me see if this one is the right. Yes, the workflow. So um, as you can see from here, this is basically the workflow of the year project, right? So um, maybe it's better to just uh, talk it talk about it a little bit. So we already mentioned about stage one, and then we have stage two that is to officially conduct the review following the protocol. And that includes like uh, you do some pilot searches um, to retune your keywords, and then to see, you know, the, the, the horizontal, um, the, uh, how to say, the status quo, over, overall status of the research, you can get an overview from pilot searches. Let's say how many results you actually can get from these keywords you came up. And then you have formal searches, so that's it, that is to use the fine-tuned keywords to search in different databases. And then you have data integration and cleaning, that is after you downloaded all the outputs of your searches and you clean the data such as removing those um, literature that are not meeting your inclusion criteria, like not published in English or um, not, um, uh, let's say, uh, the publication year is not inside the year range that you wanted to include, things like that. And also, for instance, removing duplicates. Okay, because um, across different databases, they might in, they may index the same literature, and then you have initial screening um, to do a similar thing as you did with the data cleaning, but in more detail. And you have also um, so initial cleaning screening also include, for instance, um, you do the group coding to uh, based on the inclusion exclusion criteria to uh, decide what to include and what to exclude by, for instance, reading the titles and uh, abstracts, sometimes referring to the full text of the literature. So that is a very, very um, intense step, uh, this uh, phase, phase six uh, under stage two. And then you have phase seven to uh, search for supplementary data, um, which can be, for instance, the literature um, quoted by one research in your pool. Uh, so that is what we call the, um, backward snowballing or forward back uh, or forward snowballing. That's to search for relevant literature by looking at the reference list. And then you have, uh, um, you have to control the study quality and then other things here. And then stage three is to report that is very um, intuitive, that's very clear. You have to write the report and then you have to uh, share and publish the report. So the very complicated one is stage two. You can see there are many phases here and that indeed it takes a lot of time to, to finish this stage. But I would say today's presentation focused on stage one that is also very, very important to start because um, for instance, protocol here is basically the blueprint of your review effort. So uh, it's like a map um, before you take on the journey of doing systematic literature review. Um, but before that, you have to identify, is it really a need to do such review? Or is there really uh, enough literature, re um, literature already existing for you to do this kind of review? So the next slide, you can see Prisma. 
2009 flow diagram. So this is a very popular um, flow chart that you can reference or directly use when you are designing the flow of your uh, review research. So PRISMA is an evidence-based minimum set of items for reporting in SLR and systematic literature review. And uh, um, it focuses on reporting of reviews evaluating random, randomized trials, but can also be used as a basis for reporting other types of research. Um, so if you actually already read something about systematic literature review, you can see they are, uh, this, this method has been applied in different subjects already. But um, initially, I believe it was starting from um, health science. So you see a lot of, you know, uh, health research using this kind of uh, systematic literature review to report different research evidence that have been uh, different experiments, for instance, have been done before. And uh, this form a very uh, integrated um, research um, synthesis to inform the whole pra practice, future practice of uh, research and the policy making. So if you can go to Prisma um, statement, this website that you see on the screen, you're going to get a original flow chart um, what, of what you can see here on the right side. So uh, I highly suggest you go there and download a copy. And uh, you can also use our Google Share folder. I posted a link already in Slack. You can also download from there. So the homework will be um, you develop your own reviews workflow based on my introduction and based on the Prisma workflow I just show you, um, you know, to think about your own topic and start from these two examples. And there are two, um, two papers that you can in detail read um, to get an an understanding about what I'm talking about here uh, related to different steps you can follow to do systematic literature review because um, in when you're doing systematic literature review paper one very important thing is transparency of uh, reporting the steps and uh, that is why this step, um, this first stage is so important because that is um, where you started to think about clearly what steps you're going to take because all these steps need to be reported in the end in the publication you submit. So that will be the, um, the uh, gen, uh, uh, introduction to the flow, workflow of systematic literature review. So um, this is the first stage uh, applied in the year project. So the first phase is to identify the need for a review. So what it means, it's um, sometimes you have a question you would like to explore more, but probably that question has been tackled by other researchers before. So that is very important that you read the literature and understand if this topic is indeed a research gap that um, it needs your attention or needs scholars' attention. So extensive reading is very important. And often we have a flood of literature to read. So um, I would suggest, always suggest that you can start from systematic literature review articles or literature review articles on the topic because that already summarizes quite a lot uh, in the topic you are interested in. Um, for other independent research, uh, research, it's usually focusing on one very minor um, part of the topic so you cannot see the whole picture but with the review article with the systematic literature review article you uh, you can actually read a very wide coverage of the topic and that's a very good starting point for a beginner to the topic. And uh, to identify this need, you also, if you have a team or you are in collaboration with some co-authors, you can discuss as a team to finalize this kind of subfields of the topic to review. 
And uh, often when you read the systematic literature or review articles, they also address some research gaps for future scholars to pay attention to. And that is also a very good starting point for the beginner researchers to, um, to you know, tackle with. So the second stage, second phase of the stage one will be to develop a review protocol and uh, it has different elements you need to include. I'm going to talk about this later in detail. So let's go to the second part of this presentation. So when you, how do you identify the need for a review? Um, the method is to do a preliminary literature scoping, focusing on collecting review studies of your topic. So you can use Google Scholar, for instance, to do such a task. You can use the sole keyword that I call it, sole keyword. Let's say I am trying to do research related to um, entrepreneurship education, as you can see on the screenshot here. Uh, that is my sole keyword. Let's say if you are focusing on expat working in Japan, that will be expat in Japan, right? That's the sole keyword of your topic. And then you use comma and review, and that would be sufficient enough for you to start searching on review articles of this topic. And you can browse through first 20, 30, 40, depending on the results, how relevant they are, um, but you can go between 20 to 50 pages of the results. And you also needed to pay attention to cited by, that is how, how high, highly recognized this paper um, has been in the community. So how many times it has been cited by other scholars in their studies. And that is very important indicator to judge the quality or recognition rate of the article you are looking at. But anyway, this is a good starting point for you to look for review articles of your topic. And you, you collect the details of these uh, review articles in an Excel table like this one that we have in the year project. And you can also find the template in Google Drive uh, with it by visiting this link. So as you can see that um, this is only a screenshot of the um, Excel table we prepared. But the idea is that you need to abstract details from this um, different review articles, um, like the title of it, the year of publication, how many times it got cited by peer scholars, and what kind of source or publication outlets they are um, in, they're found, and what kind of study type it is. Is it a meta-analysis or a systematic literature review or biblio uh, bibliometric study, things like that. And then what kind of systematic literature review steps they, they went through. So for instance, if you look at this um, table in particular, you will see that um, some use self-developed steps but quite a, quite a few studies actually quote Peterway and Cope. Uh, that study was published in 2007, and I highlighted here on the seventh row of the Excel table. So this study actually got quoted by, for instance, the row 21 Nabi study, row 22 Henry study. They both quoted Peterway and Cope's study, right? So this one also, row 16 also quote Peterway. So apparently Peterway and Cope's study was quite very uh, greatly recognized and they had a quotation number like 1,361. So that's a very influential study that I should not miss. So this is only an example that how preliminary literature scoping can give you insight to what to read first and what should be a proper guidance for your next step, things like that. And uh, you can find uh, the detail, you can find the detail template in this link again. And if you have any question related to the fields which are presented by column here, uh, you can write me later. 
So what are the purposes of doing such literature scoping? So one is, as I said, to e identify some influential review studies in a topic to begin reading. And uh, so you can focus on big picture, you can um, um, start big and then narrow down from there. And another purpose is you can identify established or recognized workflow like the one we have here from Peter Way and uh, Cope in 2007. So it was 12 step uh, guidance, uh, 12 steps of doing systematic literature review in their study and that's been cited by other scholars uh, widely. So that is what we say established or recognized workflow of doing SLR. So another purpose is to identify research gaps because often um, this systematic literature review studies, they look at a big picture of many studies on the same topic and they they share with the future scholars what kind of gaps they have from such a synthesis effort. So that is also very good starting point for um, comparing your own proposal to the identified research gaps and see if they, you are really contributing to the topic or you are just repeating what have been done before. And another purpose is that, oh, that, like what I said, another purpose is to verify your research proposal and interest against uh, the synthesis to work of others. So examples of key studies in year projects are two studies. One is on Tlan Field, um, Danger and Smart. Their study was published in 2003 and they introduced three stage uh, systematic literature review um, you know, process. And then um, Peter Wei and Cope, they actually modified the work by Tlanfield and other people in 2003 and came up with the 12 stages of doing SLR. So it's very, very widely quoted in the at least the entrepreneurship education research. So that's why in year project, we also modify based on Peter Wayne and Cope's 12 steps and came up with our own, uh, as you can see here, um, three stages in total 12 stages, uh, uh, phases work here. Slightly different from um, Peter Way's work, but uh, we did start from their work. And that was very helpful to guide the direction and steps of doing systematic literature review on our topic. So your second homework should be, you try to look into Google Scholar using what I just introduced, or if you have better method, you can communicate uh, um, on Slack with the other group members and uh, teach me as well. So uh, you should conduct your preliminary literature scoping and you should read at least five highly cited review articles in the next two weeks to summarize the research gaps and compare with your own proposal to see um, your position in the, in the research community. So as I said before, templates available in Google Drive and you can direct, directly download from the drive and uh, modify uh, for your own uh, research purpose. So let's go to one very important um, element of the first stage that is to develop a research review protocol for your systematic literature review. So what is it? It is like what I said, a blueprint for your whole whole effort of doing systematic literature review. It includes different uh, elements that you have to address or you need to brainstorm or describe in the early stage of your doing systematic literature review. So uh, no matter you are doing systematic reviews or meta analysis, so what are the difference between these two? Meta analysis usually is very quantitative. Okay, you have different quantitative uh, works and you have to compare some quantitative uh, um, measures. So you use meta analysis to do such a systematic literature review. But in any case, a protocol is an important document that can communicate with your team, with yourself, with the future scholars, about the whole 
design of this systematic review. Okay, so you have to pay um, additional, very, very high um, attention to this document because uh, it is uh, very important for you not to get lost during the process. But of course, protocol is not fixed usually. You come with a first draft of protocol, you go through the state stages sometimes you find some problem and you go back to retune your protocol and that can happen as well so research is always a very iterative process you cannot do just you know one direction work you always do kind of in loop process of uh, inquiries so why to produce one um, that that is to detail the direction to detail the steps that's basically your map to your slr and uh, it is uh, also a communication tool for others to evaluate your quality of uh, SLR and uh, also to maybe follow your steps to replicate your research and to see if they can do the same, uh, have the same results or they can find something different um, on their chosen topics. So when to produce one, that is after you have a clear review, after your preliminary literature scoping, you, you finally finalized the direction of doing this review, then you can start drawing the map of this research. And who to produce it? Usually it's the principal investigator. If you're just by yourself, that would be you. If you are following someone else, uh, you are co-author of someone else, then probably sometimes you just do it together. But very often it's the principal investigator who is the first author of the um, project of the publication who is responsible for doing this, um, partially supported by other co-authors or collaborators. So where to publish it? So once you have a, um, a research review protocol, uh, often you actually also share it or publish it through different uh, websites. And as I said before, SLR was firstly adopted widely in health science. So you can see a lot of public um, um, protocol publication outlets actually they are very health science based community. So that is listed on the left column of this presentation slide. Uh, the widely used one is Prospero, but if you go to Prospero and you will see a lot of uh, um, protocols are related to cancer, you know, different kind of diagnosis, different kind of medical experiments. So very health science driven. Um, for social science, um, the, the choice is much, much um, limited. So you have, for instance, Camp Bell uh, collaboration, but for Camp Bell collaboration, um, you, you, if you submit your, um, protocol to them, you also need to agree that all your following up, all your follow up um, preprints or final report need to go to them as well. So if you have to publish it elsewhere, you have to write to them to communicate about it. So that is uh, less freedom, let's say, to uh, publish with the Camper Bell collaboration. For the fig share and uh, the osf.eo, they are like how to say, um, they allow you to upload your protocol, but also other project management things. Okay, it's 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 for researchers to communicate to their research openly to other people by publishing the process of their project, including documents generated over the process, to this website. So um, it. I believe it doesn't have a very fixed format of such document. Um, for instance, if you publish your protocol on Prospero, you have to follow a very strictly um, predefined format they provide. Um, so different elements of protocol you have to provide. And then when it's published, um, it is the same format of the same elements, right? So for for Figshare or the Open Science Framework, for instance, um, you just upload a document. It can be self-defined by you what kind of elements to include. So that's different things between these two. So it's less strictly defined. Um, but anyway, if you upload one protocol 
document or data set to such community, you can get a DOI identifier uh, code. So you can actually share this with uh, your community, with your collaborators. So another community to publish will be to open a new project on ResearchGate and, uh, you know, um, you work it same way as the Figshare or OSF.io. You just upload your protocol to the project and uh, the same way you are going to get a uh, um, research gate identifier code to this document you can share with other people so as as i have to repeat this um so SLR is a very widely used health science uh, related method is very established in health science field um, but when it comes to publishing um, protocol about it in social science, we do have a less structured solution. And how to write one? Um, so Prospero has standard form um, listing different elements you need to provide when you upload um, protocol with them. So that includes uh, those items that you can see from the screen, like what kind of questions you want to tackle with what kind of search, searching strategy you are using, what types of study are going to be included and excluded, and what kind of conditions or domains are being studied, the participants' po population under um, investigation, and uh, all other things you can see here. So it's a very uh, in-depth, um, let's say, illustration of the whole process from the data search to the data analysis, um, from funding parties to the, you know, different project management detail you have to provide here. So, um, but we can also opt for Prisma, uh, which is also widely used uh, when it comes to systematic literature literature review and uh, um, the guidance is very detailed so it's also provided in the google um, drive um, folder i share with you or you can directly go to prisma uh, website to download the original file from the website but anyway you can see here this is a checklist of different elements or sections um, that you can check against when you are reporting a systematic literature review. But since you needed to write them out in final reports in this format, you can also use as a guidance to write your protocol because protocol is kind of a short-term version of your final report without results, right? So you can use this checklist document to, you can read details um, by reading the original document available. And uh, you can see you have title, abstract, introduction, methods, and under methods, you have so many different um, sections you need to address. And you have results discussion, fundings, so maybe here in the protocol you don't have to include the results and discussion, but many things before them you have to address. So that would be a shortcut to organize your own protocol. And BTW, by the way, so that's also very important for you to consider or prepare during the early stage of your research especially when you are dealing with a very complex um, research project. So the thing you needed to think about is how to manage your data. So I, in the year project, uh, used the MP tool to build a data management plan. It's open source and you can create account with them. And then it has this step-by-step -step, uh, kind of question and you answer this kind of format. And when you answer all the questions, it generates you a PDF um, that can detail the different uh, aspects of the data management in the plan. And you can invite um, collaborators in DMP um, tool.org to create accounts so they can comment on different questions you answered already. So together you kind of modify the whole plan together and you can also share this PDF with uh, 
publicly on the MP tool and with other communities as well. So it includes like how you are going to, what kind of data you are going to include, uh, what kind of metadata you are going to um, abstract, and what kind of ethics and legal compliance you are going to take on. How do you store your data? How do you back up your data? How do you select and preserve your, your long long-term data and uh, short-term data. And you also have data sharing and responsibilities uh, um, and resources to address. So this kind of plan also help you to um, plan ahead what kind of data might be generated during the whole process of the review. And uh, you are going to plan ahead how to store them differently, how to save different things. So that's very important also for SLR research. So the third homework will be you start working on your review protocol by using the guidance of Prisma, for instance. Uh, you, you can look at this paper that I listed under the reference to understand uh, detailed items of the uh, table I, sent, uh, I shared before here. So it has a very detailed uh, information described in this paper so you can understand what to write for each item listed in the table. So that will be today's workshop for uh, the first stage, plan your systematic literature review. I hope it can clear um, some path for you to start doing systematic literature review. So um, do you have any questions? That that just for me? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just for you. If you don't have questions, I will pull.